player on our list. The number three power back of all time, Earl Campbell. Below the belt, that's where the Earl Campbell conversation always starts. You know, not many times as a young man, I've noticed another man's thighs. Earl Campbell had thighs this big. You got thighs as big as your waist. I mean, that's how big his thighs are. Maybe I'm not giving him enough credit, like this big. He's the only guy I ever saw come into our locker room before the game and had his girdle on and everything, and everybody's looking at his legs. <laughs> it was like, wow. They basically were two tree trunks with cleats at the bottom. Those tree trunks hailed from Tyler, Texas, and they took root in Houston, where Earl Campbell barreled into the hearts of Oilers fans. Who couldn't love those Oilers? You know, Pastorini's their quarterback, their coach wears a cowboy hat, and they got this big, mean bowling ball of a running back in Earl Campbell. It was a marriage made in heaven, Houston, Texas, and the Tyler Rose. They basically lined him up and ran him 30, 40 times a game. Earl not only makes the ground game go, but sets up Dan Pastorini's air attack as well. We had pretty simple game plans. I'd look at him in the huddle and say, you tired? He said, yeah, I said, I'll throw a couple. One guy cannot bring Earl Campbell down. It takes two guys to bring Earl Campbell down. He ran with amazing and destructive power. Although he was known best for his smash, Earl was also able to dash. Campbell has a 30, 35, 40, 45, he's open. Our number three power back ran away with the league's rushing title in his first three seasons. Earl was scary because of the power and his speed. You know, he had the ability to outrun you and run over you. Earl was quick enough where he would just avoid you, and then he would continue on getting yardage, and you know that's what made him great. There were a lot of unbelievable runs with this guy. I mean, the guy was just a highlight reel every time we played the game. We were playing in a Mile High Stadium, and it was third and long. Earl pops through, and Steve Foley hit him right in the thigh, delayed him just for a pause, and then he just kept on moving. Monday Night Football, Texas Kid, Bum Phillips, Oiler fans. There was just something very really magical about that whole night. Earl Campbell breaks the tackle at the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. At the 50, he may go. I remember one time we were playing the Rams in the Astrodome. Isaiah Robertson was coming in to knock him down and finish him off type of thing. And Earl head-butted Isaiah right in the chest. And hit, the next thing that hit the ground was the back of Isaiah's head. And I'd known Butch, as we called him, for years. I kind of looked down at him laying on the ground and said, what do you think about that, Butch? But the hardest hit that Earl Campbell ever dished out was in the Astrodome against the Oakland Raiders in 1979. Jack Tatum got a running start, hit him, and then Jack went down. He felt really good because he hit her hard. The Earl had spun around over the goal line, and Tatum said he looked around, and there's Earl laying in the end zone smiling at him. I enjoy sharing it with other people, and as long as I share it with other people, I think I would always be successful. Campbell shared his talents for eight unforgettable seasons. His success didn't come with a Super Bowl ring, but his reign as the Oiler Cannonball revived a franchise and made Campbell our number three power back of all time. You think about all these guys now, you watch them, and then you go back and look at Earl, and then you'll realize that they weren't great like he was.